थैंक यू चेयरपर्सन फॉर द काइंड इंट्रोडक्शन एंड थैंक यू डॉक्टर बंसी साबू डॉक्टर एस आर अरविंद फॉर गिविंग मी दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी टू प्रजेंट माई टॉक या तो ब्लड प्रेशर कंट्रोल एंड माइक्रोवेस्कुलर रिस्क रिडक्शन वी हैव लॉट ऑफ हर्ड अबाउट द ब्लड प्रेशर कंट्रोल एंड माइक्रोवेस्कुलर रिस्क रिडक्शन बट वेन इट इज एसोसिएटेड विद डायबिटीज देन आवर कंसर्न ऑलवेज रिमेन्स द माइक्रोवेस्कुलर रिस्क रिडक्शन एज वेल एज माइक्रोवेस्कुलर रिस्क रिडक्शन अकॉर्डिंग टू डब्ल्यू एच ओ हाइपर टेंशन इज डायग्नोज if when measured twice in different days systolic blood pressure on both reading is more than 140 and diastolic 90 but at the same time american heart association and american society of cardiology says that hypertension is diagnosed if when measured twice on different days systolic blood pressure more than 130 or diastolic blood pressure 80 or more than that and message of my talk what i am going to present lies in this first slide only if you keep the difference between these two cut off then you understand how can you avoid the any kind of the complication associated with diabetes including the microvascular complication if we allow the blood pressure go up to the 140 and diastolic 90 and then we try to pull it down till that time all the complications may it be microvascular complication or macrovascular complication arising out of the endothelial dysfunction sets in well and if you pull it down probably simply you can give some relief to the patient but you cannot take back to the patient into a non complicated state but if you don't allow your patient to go its blood pressure more than 130 or more than 80 if you don't allow your family members if you don't allow yourself or even the first degree of relatives those who are on the high risk of developing diabetes if you don't allow their blood pressure to go more than 130 or more than 80 then probably you can keep them complication free even if they are diabetic and controlling diabetes also important in that way india story india story says that 33 to 40% urban population is having the hypertension 12 to 17% of the rural, rural population is having the hypertension 23.5% are approximately are the men and 22.60% are the women but if we look over this cut off then india story also gets different if we go with the lower cut off because we are doing the may measurement month program every year and we are collecting lot of data so we are having about lakhs of the people's data behind us and that says if we are using the cut off of the 140 90 then this india story comes but if we use the cut off of the 130 80 the india story becomes change and it becomes just double of it 43% uh, people would be found suffering with hypertension especially those who are diabetic and if you go without diabetes probably you will find 48% means half of the population you can find with suffering with hypertension but indian population is more metabolically prone we are having lot of things which takes us to the metabolic complications earlier so for us it is important to follow the lower cut off which is more safer for us let's come over to the topic in per se when we talk about the complications the hypertension we all know these complications and renal failure retinopathy neuropathy are the main complications which are called as microvascular complication although we understand that hypertension management is very much important whether it is related to the microvascular complications or macrovascular complication and when it is a partner in crime like diabetes then the complications becomes more important why because diabetes and hypertension are the two diseases which are sharing the common soil that is the insulin resistance they are arising out of that sharing the common risk factors sharing the common complications and when they are together then probably sharing the common pathway and they enters to the complication through the atherosclerosis endothelial dysfunction vascular inflammation fibrosis and arterial remodeling all these things happen made with a diabetes alone made with a hypertension alone and if they are together then the speed becomes not 1 1 2 for the diagnosis of diabetes so when we talk about the microvascular risk we know that retinopathy macular edema non proliferative proliferative microalbuminuria macroalbuminuria 
in end stage renal disease erectile dysfunction autonomic dysfunction and peripheral neuropathy osteomyelitis amputation they all comes in the framework of microvascular complications so microvascular risk retinopathy you can see it here that are non proliferative and proliferative both but the more important is that it is not only a common complication of diabetes it is not only a common complication of the hypertension it is a leading cause of the blindness across the world and as the diabetic retinopathy progresses a range of neurological and microvascular abnormalities continues to developing side by side and nephropathy is one of the important of that if you find any patient is having the retinopathy do explore and do test him for the nephropathy too so once we talk about the retinopathy these are the stages of the hypertensive retinopathy what you know very well uh, cotton wool spot retinal hemorrhages papilledema silver wiring hard exudate and arteriovenous dripping retinal microvascular signs are strongly associated not only with hyperglycemia but also with elevated blood pressure so not only the glycemic control is important always remember hyper high blood pressure control is much more important whenever we talk about the complication related to the microvascular may be retinopathy or nephropathy so generalized retinal arterial and narrowing may be associated with markers of the inflammation and risk factors of the diabetes and hypertension together now come over to the nephropathy we all know that nephropathy is a very common complication of the diabetes and hypertension and many a times patient comes with nev diabetes with nephropathy but if hypertension is there that impacts becomes more than double diabetes amplifies the deleterious effects of the blood pressure within the glomerulus by inducing impairment in the auto regulation of the glomerular microcirculation but the more important thing what is important to understand it is there this consists of the vasodilatation of both the afferent and efferent arterioles but this vasodilatation is more pronounced on the afferent arteriole what happens of that and it gives the glomerular filtration pressures very high and once this pressure is high then the arteries or small capillaries which are supplying to that particular glomerulus they are get stretched and many a times blood is clotted in them and once this happens then that arteries is gone and supply of that nephron is done and this nephron is going to die no one can stop that so if your patient comes to you after development of the diabetes and 140 90 blood pressure major major number of the nephrons are already gone try to catch them earlier try to catch correct them earlier when they are having less than 130 80 let's come over to the neuropathy neuropathy we all know indians are having the neuropathy which is more related to the microvascular complications of the diabetes so reduced blood flow becomes the more important reason of the neuropathy in india as compared to the nerve involvement per se so when it happens reduced blood flow also becomes the cause of the nerve damage but at the same time nerve damage directly also playing as a cause of the neuropathy but the hypertension plays a bigger role once it is coming from the reduced blood flow which are supplying to the nervous tissue but at the same time patient is diabetic also so diabetes is also working on both the things may it is also reducing the blood flow it is also damaging the nerves very important cardiac autonomic dysfunction and in diabetes patient it is much more we see that normal heart rate normal heart rate variability and cardiovascular function is because of the balance of the autonomic nervous system when the sympathetic innervation and parasympathetic innervation are working in the balance but at the same time once this balance is gets disturbed the resting tachycardia takes place many of the our youngsters found with the tachycardia many of the hypertensive patients in india are found with the resting tachycardia that is a sign of the sympathetic overdrive so if we really wish to stop hypertension in them we must think that how to have a control or how to have a correction of the sympathetic overdrive and once it becomes the severest state then orthostatic hypertension hypotension and silent mi mi takes place many times patient found dead in the bed let's come over to the evidences the earliest evidence what we have received from the ukpedia about 30 years before ukpedia trial has warned us about the hypertension role in the management of 
diabetes induced complication uk pds found that improved control of the blood glucose or blood pressure reduced the risk of the major diabetic eye disease by one quarter serious deterioration of the vision by half of the patient early kidney damage by one third of the patient stroke by one third of the patient and death from diabetes related causes in one third of the patient another trial which was the dcct trial although this trial has been done in the type 1 diabetes but it also given an impact of good hypertension management in the complications of the diabetes patient in the primary prevention cohort intensive therapy reduced the adjusted mean risk for the development of retinopathy by 76% as compared with the conventional therapy in the secondary intervention cohort intensive therapy slowed the progression of the retinopathy by 54% and reduced the development of the proliferative or severe non proliferative retinopathy by 47% in the two cohorts combined intensive therapy reduced the occurrence of the microalbuminuria urine album excretion more than 40 mg per 24 hours by 39% that of the albuminuria by 54% and neuropathy by 60% the chief adverse events associated with intensive therapy was a 2 to 3 fold increase in severe hypoglycemia and intensive therapy effectively delays the onset and slows the progression of diabetic retinopathy nephropathy and neuropathy in patients with diabetes in fact this trial has been done in the type 1 diabetes patient so good management of the type 1 diabetes patient good management of the hypertension or blood pressure in type 1 diabetes patient again makes a difference as far as the complications are concerned long term effect of the early glycemic control is always based well and it's better and it keeps you and your patient much healthier till the end or till the fag end of the life or till longer time of the life so may it be you can uh, may it be microvascular complication may it be microvascular complication if you are keeping good glycemic control good blood pressure control preferably less than 130 80 even when the diabetes has not been diagnosed even when your patient is not suffering with any risk factor then it pays you much better way as compared to the any other situation so interplay between the microvascular type 2 diabetes and hypertension microvascular dysfunction can be defined as an impairment in one of these functions that is an increased microvascular permeability and impaired balance between vasodilatation and vasoconstriction as well as between thrombotic and antithrombotic properties so there are emerging evidences which says that impairment in these metabolic and hemodynamic functions can contribute to the development of the hypertension diabetes and its complications so microvascular dysfunction are arising out of this imbalance ultimately ends up into the retinopathy neuropathy and nephropathy and a small artery remodeling that occurs in patient with type 2 diabetes is characterized by the hypertrophy rather rather than inward eutrophic remodeling and the same pattern has been observed in hypertensive patient microvascular dysfunction may lead to type 2 diabetes via two mechanism one is insulin mediated glucose disposal it gets impaired another is the impairment of the insulin secretion but this microvascular dysfunction impairs the hemodynamic action of the insulin leading to impaired glucose disposal and ultimately hyperglycemia and at the end the activation of the renin angiotensin system may contribute to the microvascular dysfunction and development of the type 2 diabetes and we should always remember that ras activation is also associated with the continuously increasing insulin resistance so on the one way insulin resistance is increasing the ras activation and ras activation is further increasing the insulin resistance so hypertension becomes a contributor to the microvascular dysfunction blood pressure control decreases the onset and development of the microvascular complications in patient with diabetes especially the type 2 diabetes suggesting that hypertension contributes to microvascular complications in this population prolonged vasoconstriction may it be the sympathetic nervous system mediated may it be induced by the myogenic response or by locally produced by the circulating substances lead to microvascular remodeling and rarefaction potentially reducing the skeletal muscle glucose utilization thus causing insulin resistance as described above but also impairing insulin clearance 
So once we talk about this increasing evidence which are showing the microvascular dysfunction in remodeling precede the contribution of the development of hypertension via an increase in peripheral resistance. In most forms of the hypertension, peripheral vascular resistance is increased, possibly reflecting changes in the microvasculature. So preventive options may be for retinopathy, we can stop the hemorrhage, exudate, retinal detachment, macular edema if we continue doing the annual screening for early diagnosis and treatment. Intensive glucose and blood pressure control is obviously a most important thing to follow with that. Nephropathy can also be stopped in with intensive glucose and blood pressure control. Neuropathy is requiring the examination of the feet at every visit to the healthcare provider, examination of the patient regarding the neuropathy and asking the questions regarding the neuropathy and at the same time intensive glucose and blood pressure control is required. Many a times patient those who are coming with the neuropathy they get control even with the simply controlling their glucose level and bringing down their blood pressure. You don't need to do any specific kind of the therapy only this much becomes sufficient. The role of the blood pressure control is well understood here and it is also lying in the diet prop management, smoke, is smoke, is stopping smoking or is talking, is stopping all the tobacco products at the same time keeping your heart healthy. So if we talk about the treatment options, especially if the patient is having the retinopathy, obviously the laser treatment of the proliferative diabetic retinopathy is one of the options and it is the only option once it is in advanced state. But at the same time, if we control the hyperglycemia, control the hypertension, control the hyperlipidemia, probably we can stop the deterioration and we can really patient, uh, keep the patients in healthier condition for a longer time. So once we talk about the diabetic nephropathy, it is also is working through good glycemic control, good blood pressure control, especially the antihypertensive therapy which is used through the RAS blockage, microalbuminuria can be reduced if the blood pressure is keeping less than 130 and 80 with the uh, routine care of microalbuminuria and targets are achieved with the blood pressure. And similarly, the neuropathy, we know a lot of management uh, options are with us as far as the painful neuropathy is concerned. Tricyclic antidepressant, SNRI and alpha agonist uh, pregabalin and gabapentin are there. And they are very good in the pain control, in the, they are very good in reducing the perception of the pain. But at the same time, they are actually cannot be doing with the progression of the hypertension and diabetes. Until unless we do not stop the hypertension, we do not stop the diabetes, probably we will be requiring to increase the dose of all these medications. Microvascular complications with hypertension in diabetes, thus choice of antihypertensive is having any role. Yes, it is also having any role. And if we talk about the management option, these are the management options. But the RAS blockage is the option which gives you the best outcome if you are going ahead with the microvascular complication. Remaining other are doing good with your many other complications like diuretics are very good with the heart failure, like uh, other therapies are very good. But medical nutrition therapy, exercise and RAS blockage may be with the ACE inhibitor or ARB are the best thing to avoid microvascular complication. What the initiatives has been taken by many organizations. Now this from this year onward, ACP India chapter is also adding up their contribution to the May measurement month of the International Society of Hypertension. Already through the Indian Society of Hypertension, we are doing this activity of participating in the May measurement month program. And I invite you all, we are going to start from 1st of May. I invite you all if you are interested to be a part of this May measurement program, just write me. I will be including you and we will be moving together collecting the data for the hypertension management. I would like to inform you that Indian Society of Hypertension is also active and working for making the hypertension management guidelines which could be the India specific. And we are working on that and we would be happy to involve maximum people in making or framing of those guidelines with the help of those data management. So this is the conclusion. Hypertension management, type 2 diabetes, both are very much important. May it be for the macrovascular and microvascular complications control is required. And how can we do that? We have discussed in our 
throughout the talk. Time is not much. I am not going to uh, repeat many of the things, but more important that blood pressure is to be kept under 130, 80, and obviously the diabetes control together is very much important to reduce the inflammation, to reduce the oxidative stress, and to reduce the complication. Thank you very much.